Hello there, I'm Dave, this is Tim, and you're watching the Single Malt Review. And in the world of Scotch whiskey, there are some names you simply cannot escape. One of those is, of course, Johnny Walker. Mmm, yes, indeed. And this one, you might say, oh, it's Johnny Walker Green. They finally got round to it. Well, we almost did. This is a bit of a whiskey space oddity, as mm. so often crops up on the channel. This is another one from um, whiskey hero Ian Holmes sent us in. And pulling it out, I thought, oh, good. A full-on litre of Walker Green, one of my favourite blends. Um... But it's not. No. It's a bit different. And it took me a long time to actually realise how different it is. This is Johnny Walker Island Green, which, as we'll come around to, is, I think, a bad name. Because oh. um, Johnny Walker Green is, of course, a pretty... Well, it's not, it's not what it was in terms of its composition, but it's a, it's a composition of Talisker, Collila, Craigenmore, and Linkwood <laughs> whiskies, sort of a good balance of mainland and um, Isla Island type ones, and it, is, it has a distinct peat to it. This one aims to jack up the Collila, mm. and in doing so, jack up the peat. The, a distinctly peated John yeah. Walker. and it is. Mm. Um, I think the calling it Island Green is a bit of a mistake, because... Isla is its own region. Island <laughs> implies, I mean, Talisker is the only one there that qualifies as an island. island. Mm. But I suppose this being a duty-free only, um, mm. or at least it used to be, it may have, may have crossed, crossed the divide to the regular retail dimension that I wasn't able to find out. Um, I suppose most whiskey customers aren't really thinking uh, in that, that level of the whiskey dimension, so maybe Island Green um, pans just fine. Um, I have other thoughts on this whiskey. Um, Dave has not had the no. benefit of tasting this. I have, so we'll we'll let him catch up and mm. do the tasting notes, and then I will, then I will go into more specifics of the thoughts I have about this whiskey and what they have what they have done with this whiskey slash to this whiskey. Like the more conventional Johnny Walker Green label, this remains a pure malt whiskey. It is mm. a combination of several different single malts. There is no grain no grain here at all, no which grain. I love to see. It is, um, it's very, very odd to see in such mm. a, I guess, big, you know, conventional mm -hmm. release. You certainly won't find it in any other Johnny Walkers, including the, um, the, the great ostentatious blue. Mm -hmm. It's just an ordinary blend like any other. And yeah, Walker Green, a lot of people really like it. I really like it. Um, I like the old formulation better, as did, I think, everybody under the sun. But um, I guess just the logistics and price made that, um, made that a bit more impossible. This... Very different, as we're about to, um, mm. as we're about to demonstrate. So we'll, we'll take it from the top uh, with the nose. Peaty, mm. very peaty. The Colila, um, which is what this is sort of the, the signature, mm. the signature malt in here, is very, very evident. And that tangy sort of almost, you're almost getting the smoky bacon yeah. um, that you get from Colila, in addition to all of this mm. real radical. Isle of Tang. A hint of delicious oily kippers. It's yeah. a little bit of fish in there, smoked fish. Because, um, mm. yeah, Johnny Walker Green, you could say that's a that's a blend with a significant amount of peat in it, especially in the modern incarnation of it. Um, this one, this is peated whiskey. This is peated Isla whiskey at this point. Um, you could say the same thing about Johnny Walker <sighs> Black. It's a distinctly mm. peated blend for the same reason, Collier, um, the, the culprit in both cases. Um, mm. It's a lovely, it's a slightly coaly smoke, but mm. and a little bit of oil would associate with Kalila. Yeah, nice tarry mm. ropes, a bit of smoky bacon. Um, oh, greasy, yeah. Flinty, maritime, mm. seaweed. It's just Isla. The, anything else that's going on in here is doing it in a room so far away that you cannot hear it. And that is my first, that is my first problem with <laughs> this whiskey. Um, there is purportedly Kardhu in here and mm. Glen Kitchen. Um, which are both, you know, pretty uh, subdued flavours, you'd have to say, compared to um, Colilo in, in every case. But anyway, anyway, on the palate. Mmm. Mm. It's big. It's bold. Yes. It's very smoky. It is, really is just like a slightly warmer, slightly more... Slightly gentle, gentler, more mm. savoury collier, really. And yeah. that is, that's kind of what it is. It's very peaty, but in a deep and layered way, not just a sheer wallop-in-the-face mm. intensity of peat. That's what's impressing me. It's not just a 
peat experience like an Ardberg, there is actually a, there's this, a layer of peat smoke, then there is coal smoke, then there's a whiff of a handful of fresh coal, there is some like, um, charcoal smoked meats. It is a good a kind of a flavour journey on yeah. peat, not simply a um, attempt to get the highest ppm possible it is not lacking in flavor mm. and as a whiskey judged on its own i think it's really good i really? really enjoy drinking this whiskey the problem i have with this whiskey is i think it is something of an anathema to the green label um oh. heritage um again from the top what this has gained what this mm. has lost um sharp eyed amongst you will realize that there is no number there is no digits mm. on this bottle it has lost its 15 years yeah. um guarantee and it has become a no age statement. The reasons for this, I suspect, is because 15 year old Colilo does not come cheap. Hmm. And if you jack up said 15 year old Colilo, this becomes rapidly difficult to sell for the amount of money people are willing to drop on a litre bottle at duty free. So I suspect they had to make some make some concessions in the age of that Colilo. I'm not saying it's um, immature, it certainly isn't. Um, but it's probably more like ten year old Collie Lou right. than fifteen Maybe it's because, a standard bottle, yeah, yeah, because that's well I think I think it's twelve actually. Right? But, mm, know, it's like it's yeah. certainly not fifteen. <laughs> um that's getting into fifteen, that's old Isla Whiskey at that point, and that's a that's a real expensive subject to broach. So yeah, I don't think the um the budget met the ends here. It hasn't lost any strength, it's still forty three percent just like the old one, so that's all good. And yeah, lovely, lovely litre bottle, which mm. is always heartening to see, no matter what you're tasting. Um, but my real problem with this is they should have called it something else. They should have associated oh. it with Black Label, because this is way more of a, like a Johnny Walker Black Super. Right. Um, they've already shot themselves in the foot there by <laughs> making a Johnny Walker Double Black, so mm. they can't call it that. Um, but what they've done here is kind of turned... Johnny Walker Green into a version of Johnny Walker Black, which is already a very Collie dominant, yeah. um, in terms of the malt anyway, um, blend. They've just made a single, like a, a malt blend version mm. of Johnny Walker Black and called it Johnny Walker Green, which is not what it's about. I Johnny Walker so Green, yeah. The key was to keep that association of it being pure malt, which is one of the biggest selling points of this, I think, compared to the more conventional yeah. black I, and, and I can only assume yeah. that's what the that was the line of mm. um, the line of thinking. Rather than trying to raise Johnny Walker black and then the black is black times infinity. Yeah, like uh, triple black. I, it was I'm sure this discussion almost, you know, mm. um, word for word happened around some boardroom table somewhere <laughs> and they this is this is what they yeah. came to. Like, no, I'm, to... I'm honestly fine with it. Making it a kind of like a spin-off or a companion to regular Johnny Walker Green is probably, I think, the right way. It, yeah. You know what kind of tier it sits in the I Johnny guess, Walker pantheon. Yeah. I, I guess I'm, I'm coming at this as a, like, one of these stuck-in-the-mud mm. Johnny Walker Green purists okay. that you know that will really fight for the Johnny Walker green mm. being such a, a weird oddity of a whiskey you know it's Johnny Walker and yet it's mm. all single malts and it's this incredible knife edge mm. balancing act between a peated whiskey and a you know a, a not conspicuously mm. peated whiskey this one just topples the whole thing into the peated <laughs> category and uh, because it's Colila that's doing it it just mm. tastes so much like it just seems like the, the spirit of Johnny Walker Black is so much more alive in this one mm -hmm. than the spirit of Johnny Walker Green because the malts that they're using don't even represent anymore. Mm -hmm. Going off the label, there isn't even any Craig and Moore or Linkwood in here. Mm -hmm. It's Glen Kinchy and Kartu instead. And that's it's barely even green anymore. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know. Um, maybe I'm being a bit more mm -hmm. sort of curmudgeonly about this because the whiskey itself is phenomenal. It's really good. Yeah. Um, no, it's... I'm really happy with it. I think they've done the right way, according to Johnny Walker Green. It is less peaty than a full-on uh, Coelha, because obviously it's diluted with one of those less peated whiskies which are in there. So it's not a just a peat extravaganza from one end to the other. It is a more peaty, but still very accessible blended malt whiskey, and a very good one at that. Mm. It is obviously a peat-forward offering. It is a peated whiskey, first and foremost, but it is not just a... Like a um, well, light showers of peat all over your palate. Yeah. No, I mean, I like it. I like it just fine. I think yeah. it's my um, 
my as a as a green subscriber is yeah. it's very where it, where it really kind of where it, it riles me a little bit, <laughs> um, which makes it that much more embarrassing that we haven't reviewed the actual <laughs> green, um, which I will remedy. I will promise to remedy this year, and we can compare compare the scores, <laughs> which aren't going to be low at all because no, this is this is a very tasty. This is rock. a pretty scrummy. It's a good way to have a. Thoroughly peaty whiskey, if I'm going for a heavily peated peat extravaganza, which just ends up taking the piss yeah, lightly. Yeah. No, this is a um, pretty sound 87 mm. for me. What do you think? I'm of a similar note. It's an 86 for me. Mm. It is right up there. It is a very nicely balanced blended malt, yeah. which really lets the peat shine without letting it just wash everything else away. So now there you go. The, the, um, as you can see by the scientific process, the whiskey mm. isn't the problem. Um, it's the it's the the disrespect to the balancing act that is green that is the that is the problem and that's not going to be a problem for um, everybody mostly just for for me that's got me holding out holding out for the old for the old green they should have called it I don't know Johnny Walker dark green <laughs> slightly greeny black mm -hmm. I don't know see I'm every time I we broach these things I can I can hear the boardroom discussion it's like what the crap do we call it mm -hmm. um, Johnny Walker Vanta Black. Mauve. No. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure all of these discussions took place. Mm. Anyway, um, that is Johnny Walker Iron Green. It's a interesting animal. Um, those of you who like Isla Whiskey will be right at home. Mm. Those of you who like green are not going to get Johnny Walker Green. Mm. Um, that's the probably the only caution I would put on this yeah. one. Um, but as a as a Sort of a slightly leashed collilo, mm. collilo with a bit more um, warmth and body and sweetness. Uh, this is a pretty pretty good old example. If you like a bit of peat but don't want to go into full Ardbeg territory, then this is the perfect mm. blend mold for you. Yeah, not a not a bad ramp yeah. onto the full full Isla um, stuff. You know, if you can't find Tugmori or something mm. that's got you know one one foot in the one foot in the water there, then. <laughs> This might be um, one to go for if you can find it. But yeah, no. If anyone else, if there's any other green aficionados, what do you feel about this? Am I being, am I being overly weird about my um, sort of adherence to the, the the cult of green? <laughs> I think you um, are honestly. It's, 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 it's quite. It's entirely much. possible. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We're 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 a, we're a trodden people, constantly <laughs> in fear of our favourite Johnny Walker being deleted as they are. Like the finger hovers over that button every year. You always hear stories about how they almost deleted green from the range because hmm. it's so expensive to make and um, has such a little following. But uh, no, we're hanging in there. We're hanging in there. Anyway, uh, one more in the session today, and we will be right back with that one. And we're sticking for once in Scotland. So mm. it's going to be a classic number coming up. So stay frosty. Slanger, we will be right back. <laughs> 